Hi, this is Rebecca and Leslie with the Geeky Girls Night In podcast. Geeky Girls Night In is a podcast with your fandom family sleepover style. Empowering fans and creating inclusive fan spaces where we can all be ourselves. So get your jammies, grab a drink, gather the fur babies, and join the conversation. Hey y'all, welcome back this week. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. We have so many exciting things for you today. Yes, yes. Um, Leslie will be talking about video games. Uh, she's got video game updates. I've got some sort of just pop culture news updates, a couple reviews. We're going to talk about the um, controversy surrounding The Predator and the update on my finalist video for Telefilms. Yay! And then speaking of geeking out, we have a very special guest that Leslie has geeked out over for quite a while now. So it's very yes. exciting to have him. And you guys are going to love the interview as Leslie shares one of her geek um, favorites. Yes, the Black Alachian. So you guys just, you need to tune in. He's great. Cool. Well, you want to yes. kick off your weekend geek, huh? Yes. So what are you drinking today? Well, I have tea because I did not realize I ran out of coffee. It's a little, actually, it's a little early here. Um, mm-hmm. we're recording this. I think I woke up at a little before eight, which for a Sunday for me, you know, so, <laughs> but I ran a coffee, so I've got some tea and I have it in my, a woman's place is in the resistance mug that Miss Lizzie Drury sent me because she's a darling. Very cool. I am back on that, the Republic of Tea Kick and I have the Earl Grayer tea mm-hmm. and it's really fancy. It, it tastes Picard. like Earl Grey to me though. I don't, I don't feel any kicks or anything like that. And then I'm back in my Harry Potter, um, the Marauders map, uh, mug. That's huge. I didn't realize how huge it was until I emptied an entire teapot of water into it. And there was still space. <laughs> do you, uh, so. do you feel like Captain Picard with your Earl Grey hot? I do. I do. <laughs> yeah. And like, I left one for, for my husband so he can feel like Captain Picard too. Nice. So. Thanks again to the Republic of Tea for that lovely tea sampler. Um, my Weekend Geek starts out with a first major Fortnite win um, with Woo-hoo. new gameplay introduced. So for you guys that, that don't know, um, I suck at Fortnite. That, <laughs> that is my identity and that is who I am. And it's mainly because... Um, I know a lot of the people that play are are kids, like teenagers and and younger kids. And, like, they had all summer to play and learn and perfect. I can only play maybe, like, once a week on the weekends. I got got a full-time job. I got Mm -hmm. a family. I got a kid. You know. A toddler, specifically. Yes. Yes. They will keep Uh, you busy. Yes. And she'll watch TV, but we don't like to put her in front of the TV because she gets aggressive. Like she gets very angry when you cut off her shows. Oh my God. So it's just best not to have the shows at all because she doesn't miss them. Yeah. But if she misses them, then we got a fight on our hands. So <laughs> we don't deal with that. So Fortnite just introduced a new type of gameplay. It's called the getaway. And basically it's um, a heist meets musical chairs so you have to get a jeweled llama there's like four or five of them and there's a hundred people on the map and they're teams of two so basically about 50 teams and you have to get a llama and then you have to get a getaway car okay now (laughs) you've got people chasing you for the llamas and then the getaway cars are up in the sky so then you have to build up to them. So people see you building, they're going to start shooting at your building, trying to knock you off so you can't get up there. So me and my husband play, and, like, we had our butts kicked all day yesterday, and that's when we first started playing this particular mode of gameplay. And um, today, right before we came down, like, I died, because that's what I do in this game. I die a lot. And, um, but... Like, my death, and, like, when we die in the game, the other one screams for the other person to avenge them. (laughs) You and your husband? So I die. I see all my items scatter, and, like, you'll hear a scream, go, avenge me. And so my (laughs) husband, if he's nearby, he'll go and try and kill whoever it was that killed me and vice versa. Oh, my God. That's true love. 
Right. And so, like, he killed the person that killed me. And, you know, when you die, all your stuff scatters on the ground. And he's like, hey, they have a llama. So he picked up the llama and, like, there was nobody around. So he built his little ramp and got in the getaway car. So we won. (laughs) (laughs) Technically, it's his win, but I was part of the team, so I I win. Right, right, right. Llama wins for everyone. (laughs) Exactly. It was, it was great. And then, so that was, you know, what I did for Fortnite and y'all, I I need to talk to y'all about this game I played recently. Um, I was approached by a PR company and they gave me a code to play a game and the game is called super seducer Two: advanced seduction tactics. (laughs) It's like the game or something. Yeah, that's the name of the game. That is the name oh of the game. Oh, my God. And I'm going to read you the about. Okay, okay. So you understand. Super Seducer 2 is the inclusive sequel to Steam's first live-action seduction and dating sim, Super Seducer, which sold over 85,000 copies. Featuring over 11 hours of full motion video content, the game aims to teach players the ins, outs, tips, and tricks to successfully flirt, introduce themselves and move beyond high oh my god who is this who is this targeted to i mean since they gave it to you it's not just towards men i assume no it's towards men and women to teach you how to flirt yes because (laughs) and like i i didn't see super seducer one but from what they talked about in the video at the beginning of the game they had some complaints so um rebecca Uh uh you're single Right. <laughs> um, this is for you. And basically, <laughs> I'm also 42 and I have a child. I think I figured out flirtation. This, this was great. So, like, you know, back in the early 2000s, there were, I guess they're called pickup artists. Oh, yeah. And, Very right. infamous. Like, they, they're famous for coming up with the thing of nagging, basically telling a woman how crap she is so that she likes you. Right. So this is like, he strikes me as a pickup artist, but none of the negatives. Okay. Okay. So this game starts out and like, I can only talk about the first three chapters, but I'm here to tell you, I only played one chapter and I played it with my husband And, like, he's laughing at me the whole time because I have, like, mortification and embarrassment just, like, clear across my face because I answer questions wrong. Uh So um, the game starts, and it's the guy telling how they improved on this. He's like, we listened to your suggestions, and we have added people of color. We have Asian people. And I'm like, this is not going to be good. (laughs) He's like, we have black people. We we." We even have a Scottish man. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> so, and Girl. Then he's got a, and they're, like, they're all dressed up. It's, like, all these people, and they're dressed up, like, super fancy, like they're going to a ball. Uh-huh. And they're sitting on couches and drinking champagne. And then it goes into the game. Okay. So the game is this pickup artist light dude. And he looks like... Um, I worked at a furniture store and I worked with a gentleman named Kyle. Kyle, if you're listening to this, hey, boo, hey. He is the sweetest. He's he's an absolute doll and he he always, like, trained me on stuff. He looks like Kyle if Kyle was smarmy. Kyle, you're not smarmy, so you don't look <laughs> – you, you get what I'm saying here. Did he have Kyle that big like, lampshade hat that the pickup artist in the 2000s had? No, no, he didn't. He – like, one of the things that bugged me about him was that he wore loafers with everything with no socks. Uh-huh. Like, like, like he'd have on dress outfits and like, uh-huh. there'd be like an inch of his ankle showing and it would just be like bare ankle, nothing <laughs> there. No, jo- I don't know. So like the game starts out and he's in a tank and he's doing like donuts in a tank and he hops out the tank and he's like, Hey mate, we messed up the grass. And then he, he gets out the tank and he's at a country club. Okay. And so he goes to the country club and he sits there and then like a woman shows up and she's getting off a boat and she's so glamorous and she gets off the boat and she sits there and then bam, your first question pops up. Do you, um, I'm trying to think, do you wave at her before you come forward? Uh Do you just bust up on the scene? Okay. Do do you wave your finger at her like a little penis? What? (laughs) 
<laughs> Did they like, say it like a penis? Be- yeah, that's literally what it said. And then there was another option. And I chose to, like, wave at her. And so I waved before coming up, and that was the correct answer. And, like, once you pick an answer, it goes back to the people that are, like, glamorous and sitting on couches and drinking <laughs> champagne. And they explain to you why this was the correct answer. Okay. So I'm getting involved in this gameplay. And, like... There's, like, always one answer that's absolutely ridiculous that you shouldn't pick. Like, one of the responses was, you know, uh, what should you do? And it was, like, one of the options was to spike her drink to make her more comfortable. And I was, like, "Eh." oh, my God. So this game could literally just be don't be a rapist 101? Kind of, yeah. And so if you pick a wrong answer... Um, and I'm going to tell you, the answer that I picked on one of these did not seem like a wrong answer to me. Like, one of the things was, like, have her play cards with you. And, like, you go to play cards, and she's like, oh, I love cards. And they're British, by the way. They're okay. British okay. <laughs> that's, that's That's my British accent. Okay. It's just fun drink. And, and um, he's like, I have some very sexy cards. And Ooh. she's like... <laughs> She's like, oh, you mean with naked women on him? And he goes, no. And he starts, like, throwing down these cards, and they're naked men. And she's like, oh, my God. And then at one point, like, he sees an ex-girlfriend. And I guess this girlfriend was in Super Seducer 1 because you see flashbacks of a a party. And, like, one of your options is to maybe, like, one of the options is to hide from her. One of the options is to trash talk her. One of the options is to, you know, say hello. And I'm like, you know, let's diffuse a potentially missed situation. Let's just go ahead and say hello to her. And I say hello, and the girl walks up to the other girl and whispers in her ear. And, like, he's steady trying to carry on a conversation with her. He's like, "How's, how's your sister? How's how's this? How's that? <laughs> and she completely ignores him, glares at him, and then walks off. And he goes, well, what did she say to you? And he's like, and the woman goes, she said you had a little dick and you can't sing. This was in the, in the, in the game? Yes. Wow. <laughs> and if you answered a question incorrectly, um, the, the quick frame that it would go to wouldn't be like the elegant people. It would be the guy and his counterpart and they'd still be talking to you. But there's like two like built men, one of which was gun. This game sounds bananas. It was so crazy. And so like I played it and I won. Like nice. I had like 86% because like I, the one question I answered, the two questions I answered wrong were um, wave high to the X and asked to play cards. Uh-huh. And, but like I asked to play cards, by the way, because the two other ones didn't make sense to me. Like, right. um, one of them was ask a, a question from this person's questionnaire. And like, they give you, they give you more options. They give you second chances to go back and, and fix your answer. And so I chose that. And I guess this dude who the, the questionnaire is named after has this actual questionnaire and he's one of those pickup artists dude like a legit weird hat pickup artist guy (laughs) and and the the question was like where if you guys have kids uh tell them to go away for a minute i'll give them a second (laughs) okay okay your kids are gone so like, the question was, do you know where, like, and he's asking the girl this. He's like, do you know where I can find a masturbation station? What? And she's like, oh, what? And he's like, a masturbation station. I've got a hard on. And what? I like, take care of it. Maybe there's a window there so I can look at you as I jack off. And I'm just like, and she's like, there is sick in my mouth. And she's like, oh, that, he's like, that's disgusting. You're going to make me lose my hard on. And she, like, runs away. What? Wow, this this game is truly bananas. Yeah, so it's it's a lot. It's a lot. And like, so that was chapter one. And I was done after chapter one because I was mortified. Right. I had to shut it. But like, there's six other chapters. Uh, the demo let me play up to chapter three if I wanted to. And I knew that there was going to be some smoke in the city because third chapter was titled Interracial Dating. So I was like, you know what? This is enough for today. Well, yeah, I think that was a smart, a smart call. 
<laughs> my, like my husband, like he looked at my face and he looked at the game. He's like, I think you did your due diligence. <laughs> I, I think, think you did too. I think you're done. So, you know, if you're into being embarrassed and asking weird questions and, and you, or, or you don't know how to talk to people because he does give legitimate explanations on why these questions are not good questions to right. ask or things to do when you're first meeting somebody like he looks smarmy but he's not smart <laughs> and so wow. like he just looks a little too like something's not i don't know i just i can't put my finger on it but he looks <laughs> like he would take you know he would steal my identity oh my god so yeah super seducer too. advanced seduction <laughs> tactic <laughs> Oh, and it comes out on the 12th. Uh, today is when we record. It's the 9th, 10th, 11th. I think it comes out the day that we release this. So if you guys happen to pick it up, yeah, it comes out the day that yeah, we release Yeah, let us know release. what you think. <laughs> please do. Please tweet. tweet please add us at Geeky Girls and I because it's like 12 bucks. It's like maybe 13. It's 12.99. It's like 12.99. You get all these chapters of gameplay and I want to know your opinion on it because <laughs> it was a lot. And like, I suffer from secondhand embarrassment. It's why I don't watch a whole lot of TV because if something embarrassing happens to the character, like I'm over in my seat, like physically writhing in pain. Well, yeah. Well, it's funny because that they would send it to you because you've said you do not even read a like, sexual content in your fix and so you're you're like ah it embarrasses me so it, i guess it was a comedic value that you got to play <laughs> this one it was it was so like we were just like both me and my husband because like i would read the questions aloud to him and like the the one question the masturbation station question i was like i don't know what these questionnaires are because there was also a proust questionnaire that you could talk to them huh. about a question from that i don't know what a prouse questionnaire is and okay. i definitely didn't know the masturbation station questionnaire <laughs> person is <laughs> so there girl there we go it was a lot and then before i'm done i forgot to put it up but i'm in the middle of reading a book and it's called long may she rain and i don't know who it's by um it's Rhiannon Thomas. It's by Rhiannon Thomas. And so I'm not giving away any spoilers by telling you this, but I think it's on the fly leaf of the book. But so this girl is like 36 in line to the throne, right? Uh -huh. So she ain't worried about it because the way that like throne carriage works is like if the king has heirs, that pushes you even further back. Right. So, like, they were at a party at the King's, like, all the nobles and stuff, and she left early because she's a scientist and she wanted to work on something. Uh-huh. Her father comes to find her, and it turns out everybody at the thing was poisoned. What? So everybody's dead. So now she's the queen. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> So she's the queen and she's awkward and she never paid attention to court politics because she's 36th in line. Right. You know, she's, she's not expecting this. She just wanted, she wanted to grow up, become of age and go somewhere else and be a scientist where her science would be appreciated. So she's awkward. She don't know court politics and she doesn't know who to trust. Uh -huh. This is a slow going book because this girl is really awkward. Okay. Um, I'm chopping through it the best I can. So maybe by next time we podcast, I'll have a, a review for you. But girl, like I was dying. Like, honey, wow. <laughs> like she, her dad comes up to her. She's like, everybody else was poisoned. Oh my at God. This party. Everybody's dead. You're the queen. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, what a circumstance. Like, right. That's, a, that's 30, 35 people just gone. And wow. she's like, I don't. Yeah. And, I already have some suspicions because her dad was at that same thing. Huh. And so why didn't he die? Mm -hmm. There was also a handful of other people there that didn't die. 
Mm-hmm. So, like, it was something in the food. And one of her advisors made a comment mm-hmm. about something. About the... I will let you guys know, but okay. he made a comment that makes me like, I'm suspicious of everybody that was there at this point. Yeah. Everybody that's still living because it don't make no sense. Got How it. everybody dead? How you dead? Yeah. So, all right. Moving huh. on. <laughs> How was your week? <laughs> Good. Actually, before I go into my uh, announcement things, I should tell you, I tried playing a video game for the first time since I was probably 15 years old. What'd you play? So, Skyrim, for a few, just not long. So, you know, I've talked to my son about, you know, video games. I'm going to sound ancient, but video games these days looks, I mean, they look so different than when yeah. I was a teenager, like just hugely different. And so uh, that I've always been, oh, I, if I try, I've got too many obsessions, TV, books, like I don't have time for another obsession, but he knows I love fantasy. So he's like, Skyrim. And yes, so I was over hanging out with him yesterday and he's like, well, why don't you try it? And I was like, okay, cool. Cause you know, it's just fun to do something with my son. Um, so he basically had me play one of his characters though and dump me in the middle of a game right as a dragon was attacking him. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and then my son just laughed at me as I ran into a lot of walls and got killed a lot. But yeah. um, that's basically how it went. I'm just, he's like, you're running into a wall. I'm like, how come I can't see myself? He's like, cause you're facing a wall. <laughs> Oh my god. And at the end, he's like, What'd you think? I was like, Well, it's a gorgeous game and it looks awesome. I just, you know, maybe not right, you know, drop me in to be killed by a dragon. And he's like, But it was really funny, mom. <laughs> it it takes some practice and like when I I haven't played Skyrim in a good little while, but whenever I do, I play a Khajiit, which is a cat. Oh, cool. It's a, it's a cat soldier and I name it Wibbles. So it's Wibbles the cat. Yeah, that's so cute. <laughs> yeah, I was playing but, some magician type, which I thought was really cool. But um, yeah, I pretty much just ran into walls and got killed by a dragon. But it was very cool. I, I did that my first time, too. It, it it takes some getting used to. And then plus, like, here's the thing. You can't... I'm learning that you can't play on somebody else's computer rig. Like, was this computer rig or was this console? Um, it was uh, It was on a TV. Okay, so it was console gaming. So that's a little different. I don't do a whole lot of console gaming. I think I have Fable 2 and Fable 3 on console. That's pretty much the only one. And it's Xbox 360, right. which shows you how much I play. But I typically play on a computer, on PC. And um, my PC setup is way different from my husband's PC setup. Like, my run, walk, side-to-side keys are completely different. And... Um, our mouse sensitivities are different because if I have mine set at his, like I'm automatically always looking up at the sky because I can't adjust. It's, it's so weird. It, it, it's something you have to kind of learn in your own time. And like, yeah. I think if he would have dropped you in the beginning, you would have had a little bit more fun Yeah, Be- because there is a dragon, Yeah, but you don't have to kill it. Right. Well, the fact is like, you know, just learning what the buttons were before I fought the dragon would have been helpful. But Yeah, yeah, that would have been wise. <laughs> just a little bit. But it bit. was it's it's a beautiful game. It was fun. Mhm. Mhm. So cool. So, um some announcements in geek pop culture this week. I am so excited. We have a date for Doctor Who. Yay! Because they kept saying, "Are you ready? Are you ready?" They've been telling us autumn 2018 for like I don't know, a year. So we're like, autumn what? The what of autumn, you know? (laughs) And so uh, October 7th, which is actually my older sister and my niece's birthday. Um, And so we will have our first woman doctor and a new season looks amazing. I'm already going to start planning the watch party. This is so exciting. A date. Is is it always like this? Do they always like withhold the date? Well, I mean, British shows in general, they're like, oh, it's five years from now. No, we don't care. You know, like they, <laughs> I do feel like they have less feeling of a need to, you know, um, come back in a timely manner and give you a date. But um, yes, anyway, we have a date. I'm super excited. And they're going to start replaying all the new Who episodes in the run up to it. So that's really, really cool. 
Awesome. Um, another thing, so I did. I meant to mention it before, but so San Diego Comic Con was suing Salt Lake City Comic Con because they I don't want that. anybody to be called Comic Con except them. They, you know, they've been using that name since the six late early seventies, maybe. I think that's what they said. Yeah, um, and they won their lawsuit. So they're probably coming for New York Comic Con next. Then, yeah, well, I think I, I saw a couple of other cons already change their name. So pretty much, I think across the country, all the other newer and smaller cons. So I think, um, you know, there, one is like called fan con or, you mm-hmm. know, so you just can't use the term comic con in your name anymore. Huh? So they won. Um, a couple of reviews. So I went to see the movie. I haven't gone to see a movie in so long. I think I've gone to one movie this year. Um, and then, uh, so I was excited. I went to see a movie this weekend because my son wanted, well, because my son and his girlfriend wanted to go out. So they're teenagers and can't drive yet. So they still need a chaperone. So <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> and then um, while I'm at it, I'm going to see a movie. So I saw Searching. Have you seen the previews for that? Refresh my memory. So it's kind of an indie movie. It stars John Cho. And the whole movie takes place on a computer screen. Ha. Huh. So um, his daughter goes missing. That's the premise. And he's going on her social media trying to find out more about who she was and who her friends were. And he kind of realizes, wow, I, there's a lot I didn't know about my daughter. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, it seems like it could be a bit of a gimmick, everything taking place on the computer screen because it is not a traditional camera movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was amazing. It was really good. Like, it was a very, very solid thriller. Also had a lot of heart. It has you crying in, like, the first five minutes. Like, it's really very, like, the human condition. You know, it's like they're, the, his wife, the, his, his daughter's mom had died. And so it's very much like in the aftermath of grief, you know, how you put the pieces together. And then she goes missing, and there's a lot of twists and turns. It's total, like, me, my son, and his girlfriend, uh, we were on the edge of our seats, and we didn't guess the ending like it surprised us um because it was really busy throwing a lot you a lot of curves you know so i definitely recommend it and john cho is he's amazing he's harold Um, and kumar so by (laughs) by all means go see i mean i love him i mean everybody loves john cho so um i finished reading his majesty's dragon did you like it by naomi novik i think i mentioned that i was in the middle of it i loved it it's basically the Napoleonic Wars, but they have an air force of dragons. Um, but it's less about the wars, honestly, this book, and it's more about um, the dragon and the relationship with Captain Lawrence, who kind of ends up with a dragon egg on his hands, um, was not what he was hoping for, and then kind of how he deals with it and how he deals with a baby dragon, uh, who's very rapidly a massively huge fierce dragon and it it's actually like i put on my goodreads review it's like you definitely want to have a cup of tea you're sitting by a fireplace like i had a read to me like i read i I listened to the audiobook and it's just a very i feel like cozy and classic sort of story about dragons like it's awesome i also read not my father's son by alan cumming and you know who Alan Cumming is? He plays um, Nightcrawler in X-Files. He also plays in Josie and the Pussycats. Yeah, I mean, he's been in a trillion things. Like, he's just, he's been working for decades. And um, he's, uh, he's been in The Good Wife. Um, I mean, he's just been in so many things. And he's sort of famous for being, you know, very talented, also a, a a queer actor in Mm -hmm. uh i think most people might know him from x-men yeah nightcrawler i don't know if i said nightcrawler kurt wagner nightcrawler anyway he i read one of his books called not my father's son Mm -hmm. and it was so powerful like it's very much about his childhood his father was abusive um and it's kind of like you know, and his father, of course, you know, didn't approve of anything of him because he's not like your standard macho what his dad wanted him to be. Right. 
And the story is kind of like a, a snapshot of his journey of kind of working through that trauma and becoming himself and how he's dealt with it. And I felt like it was really, really honest. It was, and it was hopeful without being like, everything's fine. I forgave him. La da. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I feel like it's a very honest um, view of his journey as he kind of, cause he, he kind of juxtaposes it with his appearance on the British show. Who do you think you are? Which is like an ancestry show. Mm -hmm. So it's very much about family and coming to terms with who you are and finding your own space within that family. Um, But uh, I highly recommend it. Cool. And then a book that I recommended is on sale. So city, the city of brass by S a Chakraborty, which, Oh my God. So freaking good. Um, 199 on Kindle right now. So go get that. Very cool. And then I wanted to mention one uh, kind of, a controversy that's come up in a, a horror movie that's coming out soon. Um, I don't know if you've seen it, but so... Yeah, yeah, I have. So The Predator, which... <clears throat> there's a new Predator movie coming out, and I actually was at the panel at Comic-Con. I wouldn't have missed it because it had so many people that are amazing on it. Um, and, uh, you know, it's... Seen, I don't know. The panel was a little bit awkward, I felt. Really? And didn't leave me, like, super wanting to see the movie. But um, I hadn't thought a whole lot of it. And then there's a controversy that came up because Olivia Munn found out that someone she was in a scene with, and in fact, she's the only person in a scene with this person, and this person hits on her in the scene. Mm-hmm. Um, turns out he's a registered sex offender. He's on the sex offender registry for, for um, basically trying to get a 14 year old to have sex with him online. He like was, you know, tricking uh. and seducing and stuff, a child. Basically he ended up doing jail time for it. So no one told her they just put her, you know, in a scene with this, sex offender and so when she was tipped off I don't know how she called the studio she said she had to call them a few times and then they cut the scene so that was the news until TIFF which is the film festival that's going on right now the Toronto Film Festival she did interviews basically saying she feels completely isolated from the cast now she said she reached because she's the only woman in a cast of a lot of men and a lot of men people look very highly on, you know, a very talented Mm -hmm. and popular man. Um, She said she called them all to let them know what was coming and if they wanted to make their own statement and none of them did. And then she said, then they went to the screening, they all gave the director who was, okay, this sex offender was the director's close personal friend. And he knew he was a sex offender and didn't tell anybody. And that's, that was at the heart of, Obviously, her problem problem? with the director, Shane Black, because this was his BFF. And when it came out, he was like, oh, I was lied to. You know, he downplayed it. So he admits he knew he was a sex offender, but said, oh, my friend downplayed it, which I think is a completely just bizarre. I mean, I Like, if you were a sex offender, wouldn't you downplay it? Like... So if somebody downplays a sex offender registry to you, shouldn't don't you have due diligence as his employer to kind of look that up? Exactly. So it's public. So first of all, you just Google his name and sex offender registry and it comes up. That's it. I mean, how do you think the media got all? And then there's like a link to his conviction. It's all public. So don't tell me you could be lied to and that like if you have a friend that's like, oh yeah, I'm a I'm a registered sex offender, but it's no big deal. You're telling me you wouldn't go Google that shit before you put him in your movie with, um, you know, with a woman where he's hitting on her in the scene and like, yikes, you know, like even if you didn't know, you should have like you you're not a child. You don't get to play like you're powerless in this. I mean, it was absurd to me. His defense was totally absurd. That oh, you know, basically I'm a victim because my friend wasn't straight with me. It's public knowledge. It's the first. It's like the first result when you Google his name and sex offender and he told you he was a sex offender. So anyway, so she was felt very, you know, 
betrayed by the director. Well, all the men gave the director a standing ovation at the screening. None of them came out and said anything. And then she said none of them, have, they started like not coming to the interviews with her and they have basically isolated themselves from her. And then one interview she did and Travante Rhodes was there and Augusto Aguilera and there, Travante is one of the main characters and he's a very respected and gorgeous guy. And he said, I wasn't disappointed in Shane. I was disappointed in the situation. But so, Shane is the situation, so... Yeah, so bruh. clearly they're all circling the wagons around the director as though he was some sort of victim in this. And so, you know, people were disappointed because, all, like I said, all of these men are very <coughs> well um, respected, like Sterling K. Brown, um, Keegan-Michael Key. And it just kind of, to me, it brings up the idea with this Time's Up thing, like everybody's for it until it makes you uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like you can wear the pins to the show. You can speak out about it and you can say, I'm absolutely, I appreciate until it has to make you uncomfortable till it's in your personal life. And then people just melt away and it's just really sad. And she said that she started feeling like she was crazy, except she said she saw Twitter and what everybody was saying on Twitter. And she's like, that helped because so many people were like, wait, 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 wait. No, that wasn't okay. He did that. You know? So yeah. um, Sterling K. Brown came on and was like, I'm sorry, you, you've you felt isolated and I stand with you, blah, 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 which was, you know, which was good, but... Um, a little too late. I don't know. It's a little bit... To me, it's a little bit too late. And also, um, I don't know. It just... what I think one thing I learned is people say Twitter activism is worthless. And I, I think we've seen lately that it's not you know, mm -hmm. because ever, she said specifically that all of these people coming to her support on Twitter helped her a lot because she felt very despondent. She said she felt like leaving the business, you know, um, because to have everyone saying, oh, I believe in time's out time, you know, time's up and then just isolating her like that and sort of just putting their hands in their pockets and whistling and walking away. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I think I think that's the main thing we have to, you know, you can go to the dude's house for a barbecue if you want. No one's saying you have to go beat him up or something, but you do have to say like, hey, that wasn't OK, right. you know, and not let her out there feeling completely crap that, right. oh, she's the troublemaker. No, no, no. She's not the troublemaker. The person who knew this person was a sex offender didn't bother telling anybody. That's that's the prob troublemaker. You know what I mean? All right. So I'm hoping it's a learning experience as well for his, for her co-stars. Yeah, you know I hopefully. Mean? So I thought that was frustrating, but hopefully, hopefully will be a learning experience. And, you know, I admire her for speaking up because I think still there's all of the pressure is in keeping quiet. Yeah. So, and they did take that seen out so she's like I think fans will really like the movie so and then the last thing I'm going to talk about is just so my finalist video last week I was telling you that I was really honored and really excited that Tello Films which is a streaming service that has lesbian content um, they have a pitch to production contest where you can pitch a TV show to them and it's sort of their way of finding new voices and diverse talent that kind of thing and then if you win, they help you develop your show. So I was chosen as one of the three finalists, which was super exciting. So I taped a video just of me telling you, hey, this is what the show is. And it's on my Twitter, though. Uh, we should probably retweet it on, on the show Twitter, but my Twitter is yeah. rmaxlyn, so R-M-A-X-L-Y-N-N. -N. If you don't follow me, it's the pin tweet if you want to go check it out. I don't know how long it's going to be until they decide on the winner. Um, and the other two finalists are also, they're really amazing and have really great stories you should check out too. So I'll keep you guys up on that. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. And then, so yeah, so t stay tuned for our um, interview um, because it's really awesome. And uh, Leslie's been a fan of this person for a long time and it's really <laughs> fun to see her get yes. geek out and, um, He's such a positive, sweet person, and um, you're really going to like the interview. 
Yes. So Logo's up next. Check him out. Cool. If you go on YouTube and you search Appalachian Trail Hiking, you'll mainly see white men and women. Imagine my surprise one day when YouTube suggested I take a look at a black gentleman with dreadlocks and gold teeth hiking the AT. <laughs> I watched Daniel, a.k.a. the Black Alachian, a.k.a. Logo, hike the AT day in and day out. He, hi- he threw hike the whole AT and gave us a glimpse into something that I'm sure a few black people have seen. And it's our absolute pleasure to welcome the Black Alachian. So, Logo, thank you so much welcome. for being here. Woo. Oh, no, man. Hey, man. Thank you guys for having me, man. I appreciate you. Uh, watching your, your Appalachian Trail videos was an absolute joy. I would run around the house screaming at my husband saying that you had uploaded a new video <laughs> or two. And I even dragged my cousin in on it. And so she's super excited about this interview as well. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's cool. So um, let's start with maybe the, the first question. Um, why did you decide to hike the Appalachian Trail? Oh, man, that's kind of a complex answer, but um, try to keep it short. Uh, I was just sick and tired, uh, sick and tired of working 60 plus hours a week as an electrician, um, mm-hmm. sick of, uh, you know, just rapping and, and things not progressing the way that I thought they should. You know, I think I'm probably like the greatest rapper ever living. So um, for me <laughs> not to have a million dollars in my pocket, uh, I was feeling some type of way, I guess, you know. Just that mixed with the social media climate of of the politics and uh, the propaganda um, just weighs down on you, man. I just needed a change. Um, So, I mean, I I just started looking for something, just just a break, some kind of serious vacation from uh, just all this this negativity. Um, So I found the Appalachian Trail just on a humbug from um, from a suggestion from my cousin on Facebook. And a few months later, there I was. Okay. That's awesome. It was it's so much fun. Um, I don't think Rebecca's seen all the videos, but you need to watch them all. I will. <laughs> it seems as though you, you easily kind of made friends along the trail. Um, how often were you traveling with other people? Uh, well, when I first started, um, about the first couple of weeks, I was just pretty much alone. I hadn't really met anybody. Plus, I was me and had never been uh, hiking or anything like that before in life. Um, I just wasn't familiar with how the community works. And the Appalachian Trail community is, is something that I found out is something totally different from most other hikes or, or outdoor activities. So, um, I mean, the first couple of weeks, I was just, you know, just trying to figure things out. And then I started meeting people. Um, we were doing about the same mileage. So we were meeting up and we started just, you know, chopping it up at the little shelters and the little break points and stuff. And, uh, so I just I traveled a, w- a couple weeks alone. Then I met a few people. We traveled together for a little while, and then uh, kept on alone. And uh, I hiked with a girl named Stormy for about five or six hundred miles. Um, mm-hmm. And other than that, uh, I was pretty much like you know just you'll meet people in town. You'll hike with them for a little while. Meet up at the shelter at night, and then you keep on about your pace. Um, okay. So it's just it's just different because I mean it's five or six thousand people out there on that trail um, each year. So you're going to run into people and, um, you know, you, you meet friends along the way. So Very cool. That's awesome. So um, one phrase that you use a lot, love and light, where did that phrase come from and what does it mean to you? Oh, love and light. Uh, I don't know. I just, you know, being a rapper, you know, I was trying to just come up with different little phrases and sayings and stuff. So. Uh, I had just started signing out my videos like that, Love and Light, um, just trying to keep positive out there on the trail. And um, it kind of stuck. I, you know, it's like a, almost like a nickname kind of thing. It's, you know, I guess it's my catchphrase now. So people just, when they would see me on the trail, having watched my videos, people that I would meet along the way or something like that that would know me or people from home that was following along, they would just, hey, Love and Light, Love and Light. So it just kind of stuck, and I just kind of just, you know, rock with it. So um, Love and Light. You know, it's, that's that's my thing now. Actually, I started loving like gear now, so I'm selling loving like gear. So, you know, uh, I guess this is my thing, man. I, <laughs> it's positivity, you know. Yeah, we dig that very much. And um, I know that you have another trip coming up, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But mm-hmm. one of the things I noted was that you have to keep the actual start date of your trip a secret because of some issues that you had on the AT. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, well, me YouTubing last year, um, 
my entire hike of the AT. I started, you know, getting a little a bit of fanfare and things like that. Um, so people started kind of like figuring out where I was going to be on the trail from watching my videos, and they were kind of like running up on me in the woods, um, which is kind of a scary thing when people run up on you in the middle of the woods, how about black lashing is kind of kind of trippy. So, um, <laughs> and, and I knew it was mostly out of love. People just wanted to kind of meet up with you, maybe take me to the store, uh, take me to lunch or something like that. It was so pretty much it was like 90% love, but it's just that little 10% that you mm-hmm. don't know um, that could be kind of fearful because, you know, I'm, I'm a black guy. I'm in the woods. It's something totally new to me. And, um, I got middle-aged white guys running up to me in the middle of the woods hollering black election. Hey, what's going on? And it's like, hey, man, it's kind of creepy. So, uh, you know, I, I just figured this time around um, with this trip that I have coming up that it's a little bit more important for me to be uh, aware of my safety and my surroundings because um, this has some historical, you know, uh, significance as well as, significance of what's going on today in the country so i don't want to be naive as to think that everybody wants to see me succeed um and, and you know 90 percent of people may be reaching out and say hey when you start and i want to come meet meet you and you know uh just catch up with you and chop it up with you or but it's that 10 percent, as i yeah. say that could be you know reaching out and, and playing like hey i want to meet you and, and do some good for you and they, they can get me out there and do some harm to me so i just kind of got to be mindful of of my safety and, and my surroundings. Right. Right. Makes, and I get that. That makes all sense. Um, speaking of the, you know, the celebrity you've and popularity you've uh, achieved from your videos. Um, so what are the positives? How are you using that popularity to help the people around you? I uh, definitely want to um, spread the word to try to get black folks in the outdoors, man. Um, starting this journey, me having no, no real, grasp of, of through hiking or, or being out in the wilderness for an extended period of time. Um, I'm sure that, you know, from the conversation that I had, a lot of people that look like me, black folks, you know, we're not aware of it either. So um, I've been just using, trying to use this platform to bring awareness to the outdoors that it's okay to go out there. You know, it's, you know, it's bears and snakes and all that kind of stuff and racist and all that, but we can get out in the outdoors. You know, that's where we come from. Like we've been lasting for thousands of years in the outdoors, you know, so, um, I just been trying to use it to bring awareness to to more black folks and people of color to hey man come on outside man just, just take a break from that from that internet for a little bit because we get we get the short end of the stick a lot of times when it comes to media um, representation so I just want to get black folks out in the outdoors and just get them to disconnect a little bit and actually reconnect with nature and get back to that as well as bringing young children out you know um, as I like to say like technology that's what it is now you know that's the generation that we are in but we also mm-hmm. have to have a balance you know i don't mind kids playing Fortnite, but you can also get out here and camp a little bit or go hiking a little bit or go fishing whatever whatever you like you know go look at some salamanders whatever whatever floats your boat but i think there needs to be a balance so i've just been trying to use my platform to to bring more awareness to people that look like me that i right, man we got to disconnect and find another way and just get back to our roots a little bit more very cool. Very cool. And I've seen pictures of, of you like leading the kids on hikes and things like that. And I just thought that was so great. Um, next up yeah. part, I'm really, really excited about. Tell us about the next adventure you are actually embarking on. Well, a um, little backstory for those that don't know, like the Appalachian Trail um, is one of like the three big hikes in the USA, um, big long hikes. They got the Appalachian Trail, they had the Pacific Crest Trail, and the Continental Divide Trail. Um, these are all 2,000 plus mile hikes, um, and all the hikers, they, they they go for the Triple Crown, what is known as the Triple Crown. They try to hike all three, get the Triple Crown, whatever the case. Um, and people were asking me what I was going to do next. Was I going to head over um, West Coast and do the PCT from Mexico to Canada? Um, and I was I was thinking about it, but after being one of the only black guys out there, um, one of two through hikers that I saw um, last year out of, like I said, 5,000 plus people that attempted every year. um, I thought it was important for me to try to do something that was more uh, akin to my people. Um, Just find something that that meant more to me. Um, And after having to explain my existence out on that trail every day, why, why don't black people hike? Oh man, I don't see many black guys and things like that just happened to to I don't know, just explain my existence 
in the outdoors, which was trippy to me. Um, so I just figured I needed to do something that, that bought shed light on it. So, um, I started doing some research and I ran across some thing that I didn't know even existed, which was the underground railroad trail. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is a 2000 mile bike trek, um, from Mobile, Alabama goes up to Owen Sound, Ontario, Canada goes up through, if it loosely follows the trail of the underground railroad, um, it has points all along the way, historical points like, you know, uncle Tom's cabin up there, um, in the Northern parts and it's, it's Africa town down in Mobile, Alabama, you know, and it's got one of the slave markets down there and things like that. So I, I was just like, all right, let me find something that can incorporate history and bring black folks in that way. So I can kind of meld, uh, well, two things together, which is my love for the outdoors and my love for history and my love for black folks. So we can try to bring those together, make some, just, just have some kind of substance to the trip, you know? So yeah. um, that's what I got coming up next, you know, and hopefully everybody can follow along. I'll be filming on YouTube and I can learn along the way. I can help teach along the way and we can get some sort of understanding and, and maybe, you know, just open some, open some eyes and some ears. Yes. Yes. I'm so excited about this trip. And I looked at the trail a little bit and it seems like you edge up onto Indiana. If you do do that, get in contact with me and me and my husband and geeky baby will come down and we'll feed you. <laughs> Definitely. Nice. Definitely. Yes. That so. sounds amazing. Yes. So how do you prepare for a trip like that? What, how, what are you doing in the run up? Oh, well, man. Um, being as, like I said, I, I hadn't, I had never hiked the day in my life before the Appalachian Trail. Um, so this is something totally new again, because this is a bike a bike journey. Um, yeah, I've been riding bikes all my life through the neighborhood, through the neighborhood of Asheville, North Carolina, where I grew up. And there's a lot of hills and stuff there, but it was, it's nothing like what I'm, what I'm taking on now. So it's just a whole new experience. So it's just been a, it's been a learning experience. You know, I, I prided myself last year on, just starting off, you know, and, and not knowing anything, just learning along the way. I kind of like to do it on the fly. Um, I think you learn a lot better. Um, mm -hmm. you, you get a, you get a better understanding of not running out of water when you're actually walking and you're out of water six or seven miles. So you have a better understanding then to pack water that you need. Um, so I like to learn along the way you learn from your mistakes. So, um, I don't know if this one's kind of hard. I was blessed to be able to be sponsored with a, a bike from REI. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been doing my little training uh, runs on that. You know, I did like 22 miles the other day, something like that. But I mean, it's just, it's nothing that's really going to prepare you for that journey. So you just kind of got to go with it. And just, you know, learn on the fly and be adaptable. And shout out to REI for that, because you're like six foot five. And, <laughs> and I know it was a struggle to get you a bike that like fit your frame. So Big up to Definitely, them. yeah. Yeah, they had to order me a, uh, a, I think the XL version. So they had to build it and everything. And they, um, shout out to the Asheville REI, Bree Miller over there, Asheville REI, and Joe, you know, the uh, bike specialists over there. They got me fitted for the bike and everything. They ordered and they sent it to the Charlotte store so I can pick it up from home here. Um, so shout out to Allie over here at the Charlotte store, you know, for helping me get fitted and everything. Man, they awesome. Yeah. Great, great. So now we have hit the lightning round. So these are just quick questions that are, you know, fast answers for us. So cool. our podcast is all about geeking out. So, and I know that you're a big geek about music and you've taught me a lot of things about hip hop and rap through your Instagram. Okay. So name an album that you couldn't live without while you were on the AT trail. I, album I couldn't live without, uh, definitely uh, Sizzle Control. And I was rocking that last year. Yeah, and one of the songs on there, I forget which one it was, like, as soon as I heard it on your, I think it was your Instagram, like, I went and downloaded it, and now my kid knows the, the lyrics <laughs> of the song. So, I appreciate that. <laughs> so, no problem, no um, problem. next lightning round question is is going in the same, like, pop culture geeky theme. So, name a TV series you've seen every episode of. Uh, TV series. Uh, let's see. Let's start off with Shameless, um, which comes back on tonight. I've seen every episode of that. Oh, I'm a huge binge watcher of all things. Um, I just finished uh, binging Ozark on Netflix. I recommend it. Highly recommend it. It's a great show. Okay. Okay. Um, one piece of equipment you were surprised that you used on the AT? Uh, piece of equipment I was surprised I used? Probably my water filter. For as long as I did, uh, I stopped using it a few hundred miles in, but 
um, yeah, I was surprised because I just drink straight out, straight out like a savage. You know, sometimes you just got to go with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, um, I'm glad you didn't get sick from that. So, yeah, I got a tough stomach, man. I eat a lot of ramen, and a lot of trash, so I, I got a pretty tough stomach. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. thank you so much for calling in. It's it's just a real honor to have you. I don't know, man. Thank you guys for having me. I mean, I could talk to y'all for 45 hour longer, you know, but it's all good. <laughs> yeah, it's really great to get an inside view. And, you know, for the people listening who um, maybe aren't familiar with you, can you let them know where they can find you online? Oh, uh, everything at the Black Alachian. You can find me on Instagram at the Black Alachian. You can find me on Facebook at the Black Alachian or my personal page, Daniel White, um, you know, and, uh, you can find me on YouTube at the Black Alachian. You can find my Love and Light Gear store at loveandlightgear.storeenv.com. Um, also, if you want to donate to the to the uh, trip that I have upcoming, you can go to my GoFundMe. Just search the Black Alachian. Um, yeah. And we will post also, all those links to in our show notes too, so people have easy access to them. Okay. Cool. Thank you. No problem. Thank you again. It's really great talking to you. Thank you so much. And have a wonderful trip. No problem. Geeky girls, man. Thank you for having me on. Much love, much success, much continued success. And uh, if I do get up in that Indiana area, man, and get close to you, I definitely hit you up because I, you know, I like to get a great, nice home cooking. <laughs> oh, God, I would absolutely <laughs> love to provide it. Do the best I can. Thank you so much for joining us today. Since we are podcast newbies, it would mean a lot to us if you'd subscribe and rate us on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, we love to hear from our listeners. Leave us a voicemail at 785-746-2604, email us at ask, A-S-K, at geekygirlguide.com, or hit us up on social media at geekygirlguide, all one word, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And remember, in the words of the great John Barrowman, Never apologize for being nerdy. Until next time.